so when you're dealing with, uh, with, with this question, which again, I only changed the 8%, it's the same question you got in the, in the, uh, in the checkpoint, and they ask you the concentration of the solution, they don't tell you half the guess, which is really, I feel like it's, that's what makes it so rigorous. Because if they told you how to guess, it might be a little easier for you. But no, you have to figure out that you have to guess. And again, when I did it, it was it took me three or four rereads to, to figure out that I was guessing based on what I know. So I have to write, the first thing I have to do is, is identify what do I know already? Well, if I paid attention in class, I know this word isotonic. I know that when something is isotonic, as the same concentration of, of solutes inside and out, I know that when that happens, I have a cell that has solutes and water running in both directions equally. So there, I also, that also tells me there is no change in the system to the system right no there's a word we used in class no net change in the system it is changing it is moving in and out but they're moving in, in both directions equally now they tell you it's a sucrose solution They tell you it's a sucrose solution. So that means it's a disaccharide. That also means that it will not pass. It does not go, does not move across the membrane. And they, that also means that water will move. Like you should know all that. That should be something you should know. So that's stuff that you know. That's part of the, the stuff you know. So you know that it's a sucrose solution. They don't tell you these other things. But if you remember from class, it's a su sucrose is a disaccharide. It does not move across the membrane because it's too big and it's polar. Large and polar does not move. And, and maybe you should, you should know at this point that disaccharide means it's large and polar. So that's not moving across the membrane without help. And this membrane doesn't have that help. So it's not moving. So that means that water is going to move from its high to its low. So water will be moving in and, uh, to it from its high to its low. All right. But I know in an isotonic solution, I know that they're going to be water is going to be moving both directions equally. There's another word that we used, and that was hyper. Tonic. And hypertonic means that it's higher, there's a higher concentration. of uh, salt outside. It, or on, oh, I said about outside, I said on one side. Now, it's, in this case, it's not salt, it's sucrose, but whatever. Tonic means solute, 
Hyper means high, so it's a higher concentration of solute. Well, I know based, uh, what else do I know about hypertonic? I know that when the solution outside is hypertonic, when the solution outside is hypertonic, I know water is going to move more outside than in. I know that water is going to move more outside than in. Some water is going to go in, but not much compared to the outside. So I know that I know water is going to go out because water is moving from its high, water high, to water low, high to low. Now, why is water moving from its high? How do I know that water is high inside and low outside? Because I know that every every system in a, a living system is divided into the solvent and the solute. If the solvent, the solute is high, say, is high, then whatever the percent solute, let's say it's 30% solute, that means that whatever is left has to be water. So in this case, it's going to be 70% water. So 70% water and 30% solute. Whatever percent solute it is. So if it's high, if I say that the hypertonic solution means that there's high salt outside, that means the water has to be low, which means water has to leave. So what does that do to the cell? That means that the cell will end up shrinking. The cell will end up shrinking. Why does it shrink? Because water left. More water left than went in. Then the last type of solution we talked about is one, uh, is one that's called hypotonic. And hypotonic is that there is a smaller, or let's say, instead of smaller, let me say lower concentration. And I put salt up there, but I should have put solute on one side. Now, what does that look like? Well, if I put, a, if I put this, this cell in a solution that has lower salt, so salt is low, well, I should say solute is low, what is water? That's right, water is high. So if water is high, that means Inside it's low, so that means water's going to go from its high to its low, so water's going to come in. A lot more water is going in the cell in this case than is leaving out. So a little's coming out, but a lot's going in. So if a lot's going a lot's going in, what's that going to do to the cell? That's going to swell it. The cell's going to be swollen. It's going to be bigger, rounder, fill in the space more. So it's going to swell. In fact, it could burst if it's if it's really low salt concentration, really high. That won't happen in a plant cell because a plant cell has a no. You're right, the vacuum would help, but it, has, it, has a, it won't blow up because it has a cell wall. cell wall. That's right. But you're right, the cell vacuum would also help. The central vacuum could help as well. So knowing all that, remembering that we knew all that, we knew all this. It just may not all be at, the fi at your fingertips because your head's in a hundred different places, but you knew all this. You come over here and you see two others. You see, what is this one? Is this one swollen or shrunk? 
Regular. It's regular. This one's shrunk. This one's obviously swollen. This one's shrunk, so this has to be the regular, right? So that's what would, what would that be out of these three choices? What is it? Isotonic. So this one is isotonic. That means it's the same. So if it's outside, it's 8%. What's inside? 8%. So that's simple. How do I know it's 8%? Because it's isotonic, the same. That's what it means. So here, this one, what's the middle one here? Hypertonic. So now this is hypertonic, means outside is what? It's bigger, bigger than what? 8%. Inside was 8% to start. Outside is whatever, anything bigger than 8. So it could be anything bigger than 8. That's why they tell you in the problem there's more than one answer, right answer. Anything bigger than it could be 9, could be 8.5, could be 100. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah, we have, to, uh, we have to make sure that we have, to, we have to go back and correct that, right? So that's when you see me Thursday morning. Let's go online and let's correct it. Is that understood? Yeah, okay. So anything over 8 is right. That's for, how do I know it's over eight? Because it shrank. And when things shrink, it's in a hypertonic solution, which means the outside has, and by the way, it's not eight anymore because it shrunk, right? So I should be careful with that. It started off as eight because that's, that's what it is when it's isotonic, you see? It started off as eight, but now it, as it shrunk, it became more and more concentrated until they become equal. So whatever that is. All right, but the point is outside concentration has to be, has to have started at bigger than eight. Then the last, that means the last one's what? It's smaller or, or uh, so we call it hypotonic. Hypo means lower, lower than what? Eight, so anything smaller than eight, seven, six, five, all would have gave you the same answer. And explaining why it happened, I just did, right? All this is the explanation of why it happened. You should know that one single sentence in each one would have got you the right answer. So hypertonic, it's 9%. It shrank. It shrank. Because water went from... It's high, comma, inside, because it was high inside, to it's low outside, period. And hypotonic, you're just right, it, it swelled because water went from its high outside to its low inside. That's it. One sentence each, a percentage. You would have got it right. But in order to get it 100% right, you had to understand all this, the stuff we talked about and did problems on for two weeks. Right? You had to know this. If you don't know this, you can't answer this. It's a rigorous question because of that. That's why, uh, that's why you give, you're given so much time on these, on these OSTs because they actually ask you to... to not to memorize and tell them what is isotonic, hypertonic, and hypotonic, but now to apply it to a problem. Here's the problem, explain it. Give me the answer based on it. That's what they're gonna keep doing over and over again. All right, so if you got that right, that made up your point on the test. If you, if you have a question or concern, see me eight in the morning till 8.30 on Thursday or Friday. After, at, and don't come in at 8.30 expecting me 
to, to have a conversation with you. At 8.30, I am now getting ready for my class. I got 10 minutes to get ready for class. So your office hours are from 8 to 8.30. If you want to have a conversation and you know there's going to be 130 some odd people possibly coming in here, you have to, you know, you have to manage your time to get here as early as you can. All right, so that's it for that.